Welcome to part one of the multi-part head sculpting extravaganza. So, uh, basically this series is just a way for me to show you my progress on uh, sculpting heads. Um, I'm doing this with Procreate in 28 millimeter scale, if you want an idea of... Um, and yes, these are my fingers, um, and I just have normal size male hands, um, so... This, these are very small, small miniatures, um, and you will get to see, if about to happen, uh, a time lapse of me actually sculpting the head. So, um, this is my first attempt. It's okay. Um, I'm pretty happy with how uh, the shape of the head came out, um, though it, you know it wasn't that much work. So I, I felt okay with this. I didn't have to sculpt the whole miniature and then just see a lot of other flaws. Um, things I would probably change for the next time um, would be that I would have a lot of clay for the, um, or not clay, I would have a, like a layer of hardened clay underneath what I'm using to shape the whole head. Like you see there on my, um, it's actually my next miniature I'm making, um, there's like a little base amount of clay for the head because when I was trying to shape the head here, I kept rocking it back and forth on the wire, and that kind of weakens the clay's grip to the wire. So I would definitely uh, put down like a longer base for what I was going to sculpt next time um, the head over. Other things, um, actually one of my friends just gave me a general idea of how the head is proportioned, because I'm too lazy to go look it up myself. Um, actually, I hate drawing. I, I can't stand drawing. I, just, I like I can only do stuff that I'm uh, working with my hands and like three dimensions on. That's just the way I like to work. So I like to use this flat tool um, to do like bigger shaping kinds of uh, bits. But then I go in with the smaller tool later once the clay is kind of dried out a little bit more and it's a little bit more resistant to being pushed around. Um, so I, I think one takeaway for this has just been know what level your clay is at like is your clay at a point where you can just move a huge chunk of it around um, and totally reshape it or are you near the later phases of drying where you can kind of cut into the clay and add more details um, I'm getting a lot of this from Thomas Mason's videos and it's been super helpful so far so um, I definitely recommend checking him out once again I keep saying that um, but he's definitely got uh, the best stuff the other thing that I kind of wanted to talk about was I was so surprised. Here I'm actually cutting out bits for a nose, and I think I made the nose too big on this one, just slightly, and it kind of threw me off. Um, so I would recommend just, you know, don't go in with the nose until you're perfectly happy with the size that you're putting on for the nose. I didn't like shaping the nose out of the clay, just because, yeah, I don't know, it gives me maybe more control over the nose, uh, its size and its shape. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it helps just to look at other people's faces. I asked a couple of my friends, can I just look at your eye sockets for a second? <laughs> and like, they, they all saw what I was doing, so nobody was too weirded out, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, so there I am just showing off the completed product. Um, so hopefully uh, do a female head soon um, and uh, just get better quality overall. Eye sockets are probably the next big uh, battle. So get ready for the next one.